Hello students and welcome to my channel Math Sub. So today in this video, I would like to introduce the topic of Laplace transforms, right? So let us understand what is Laplace transform all about in this video. So the first thing, who discovered Laplace transform? So the mathematician Pierre Simon Laplace in the year 1949. This was his period of journey, 1749-1827, when he developed a mathematical tool for solving the ODs. So what are ODs? ODs are ordinary differential equations. So if you are following my channel, you might have seen the videos on ordinary differential equations. So what is Laplace transform? It is basically a mathematical tool which helps us to solve the differential equations along with the boundary conditions together. So generally in an ordinary differential equation, we calculate the general solution by calculating the two different parts of the solution, that is the complementary solution and the particular integral. But when we apply the Laplace transform to solve it, we can calculate the solution, the general solution in one go without calculating the complementary solution and the particular integral separately, right? So now let us understand what is the definition of Laplace transform, what this tool is all about. So Laplace transform says that if there is a function ft, which is defined for all the positive values of t, then the Laplace transform of the function ft, so we also denote fs as Laplace transform of f of t, this is equal to 0 to infinity integral e raised to power minus st ft dt whereas this is a complex constant with the real part always greater than zero. So here, this L is called the Laplace transform operator. That means what is happening it is a tool which is converting a function in the time domain to a function in the frequency domain. So what is Laplace? L is a Laplace operator which is converting a function in the time domain to a function in the frequency domain. So here you can see that this is a definite integral and when we put in the limits of t from 0 to infinity, we will be only left with the variable s and hence the function has been denoted by fs. So it is converting a time domain problem to a frequency domain problem, right? So this is the basic definition of a Laplace transform. Next, what are the now we will be doing both Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms. Why do we want to learn inverse Laplace transform? Like in the previous slide I told you that whenever you have a function ft and you are applying the operator Laplace to it, what is happening? You are converting a time domain problem to a frequency domain problem. But if I have to convert a problem from a frequency domain back to the time domain, then how will I do? I have to apply the operator that is called as inverse Laplace transform. So in this video, I will be sharing you both Laplace as well as inverse Laplace because it would be very difficult for you to understand if I complete Laplace first and then inverse Laplace, it would be difficult for you to recall things. So we will do both the things simultaneously. Right. So we are saying that if Laplace transform of F is Fs, so if you apply inverse Laplace to this definition, what will you get? Laplace transform, Laplace inverse of Fs will be Laplace inverse of Laplace of Ft. So Laplace inverse and Laplace are inverse Laplace transforms. So they will become identity and you'll get back the function Ft. So L is called Laplace transform and L inverse is called the inverse Laplace transform operator. Right. Next. So let us understand that what are the sufficient conditions for the existence of Laplace transform. So we need to understand here two key terms. The first key term is a piecewise continuous function. So in your plus two, you have already done what is a continuous function. So in a layman language, I can say that what is a continuous function? If you draw the graph of any function, if you're not able to lift your pen, in one go you can draw the diagram, then or you can draw the graph, then that function is said to be continuous, right? Now here one additional word piecewise has been added to it. Now what is the meaning of piecewise? Piecewise means that when we divide the interval into different sections, into different pieces, and then if I see that whether my function is continuous or not. So here you can see that if I see this graph altogether, it is not at all a continuous function because there are many discontinuities in this, right? But 
If I divide the interval like this, from here to here, then from here to here, and then finally from here to here, in different three sections, I can see that in these three sections, the three different parts of the graphs that I'm getting, they are continuous. Similarly, in the second graph also, you can see that the whole graph is not a continuous function. But if I divide this into different intervals, and what are those intervals? You can see the bold blue lines. So in this interval, this function is continuous. In the interval 0 to 2, this function is continuous. Then in the interval 2 to further beyond this point, if I can mark this as 5, I can see that from 2 to 5, again, this function is continuous. So these type of functions, they are known as piecewise continuous functions. Right? So now let us understand what is the definition of a piecewise continuous function. So if ft is a piecewise continuous function on the interval 0 to infinity, then in any interval, line between 0 less than a less than t less than equal to t, there are at most a finite number of points tk at which the function ft has jumped discontinuities and it is continuous on each subinterval t line between tk minus 1 and tk. So we are taking the entire interval from 0 to infinity. So we are saying that in this whole interval, if we choose any subintervals in this, so let it be suppose tk minus 1, then let it be tk. So if the function, the function has many jump discontinuities at different intervals, but if in each of these intervals the function becomes continuous, then the function is said to be piecewise continuous function. So this is one of the first sufficient conditions for the existence of the Laplace transform. That means for the function to have a Laplace transform, it is not necessary that the function needs to be continuous, but it, it is necessary that the function needs to be piecewise continuous in the interval 0 to infinity. And why we have taken the interval 0 to infinity? Because in the first slide when I showed you the definition of Laplace, how did we define Laplace of ft? Laplace of ft is 0 to infinity integral e raised to power minus st ft dt. So we are integrating it over the interval 0 to infinity and hence we have taken this interval. Right? Now what is the second condition? The second condition for the existence of Laplace transform is that the function should be of exponential order. Now what is the meaning that the function should be of exponential order? Now if I have, if I show you the first graph here, you can see that this is the blue line is showing the function for f t equal to t and the pink line is showing the function of f t equal to e raised to power t. Now which function is growing fast? Is it t or is it e raised to power t? It is obviously e raised to power t. So if, a, if the growth rate is exponential, it is obviously greater than the growth rate which is linear. Right? So in the first graph, we can see that the function e t is growing fast. Right? Now in the second graph, one, the pink line is obviously e raised to power t. The blue line is showing the graph of e raised to power minus t. And from the graph, it is very clear that the growth rate of e raised to power t is greater than the growth rate of e raised to power minus t. Right? Now in the third graph, again, you can see that the pink line is showing the graph of 2 into e raised to power t. And the blue line is showing the function 2 cos t. So again, the growth rate of the pink line is greater. So we can say that mod t is less than e raised to power t. Similarly, mod of e raised to power minus t is less than e raised to power t. Likewise, cos t mod is also less than e raised to power t. So these are all functions of exponential order 1. Right? Now, let us take another example and let us see this graph now. Here you can see that the pink line is e raised to power ct and where c is any constant and the blue line is e raised to power t square. Now here, which graph is having a greater exponential growth rate? If you can see that the blue line is growing faster than the pink line. So in that case, e raised to power ct, the growth rate is less, right? So this function is not of exponential order, right? So a function ft which has a Laplace transform, it must be of exponential order. That means its growth rate must be less than the growth rate of an exponential function, right? So how do we define an exponential order? This is the definition. A function ft is said to be of exponential order alpha if there exists some constant alpha such that 
m greater than 0 such that modulus of ft is less than or equal to m into e raised to power alpha t. So, any function is of exponential order alpha whenever the function, the growth rate is less than some constant times e raised to power alpha t. Right? So, that is what I said that the function should not grow too fast. Right? So, this is my second condition for the existence of Laplace transform. So, in a nutshell, what are the conditions? The two conditions together makes the theorem that if ft is a piecewise continuous function on the interval 0 to infinity and is of exponential order alpha, then the Laplace transform of ft always exists for s greater than alpha. Right? But you can see that this is the sufficient condition, so it is not a necessary condition. So, what do you need to note? You may need to note that a function may have Laplace transform even if it violates the existence condition because this is only the sufficient condition, not the necessary condition, right? So it might happen that some functions are having Laplace transform though they do not obey this property, right? So that is all with this video. I hope you liked the video and you understood what is a Laplace transform and what are the sufficient conditions for the existence of Laplace transform. So in the next video, I'll tell you how to calculate Laplace transforms or basic functions, right? So if you haven't shared, if you haven't, you know, subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated videos. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. And the ones who have already subscribed, if you find it useful, do share it with your friends. So believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you so much.